This is the first Sunday of Christmas. And in our Old Testament lesson, the prophet of the third portion of the book of Isaiah, written approximately 530 years before Christ, holds up a brilliant hope for the discouraged Israelites returning from exile in Babylon. He thanks God for clothing him in the Lord's robes of righteousness. He compares God's salvation to a new planting. It doesn't look like much now, but it will grow. In another metaphor, he compares the relationship between the Lord and his people to that of a new bride and groom. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 10 through chapter 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the land of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. Psalm 148 is a hymn calling on all created things, including animals, trees, mountains, stars, and angels to praise God. Creation is said to transpire by his command or word. The reference to horn in verse 14 refers to God's strength and power. In short, the psalm claims that Yahweh has raised up strength for his people. Our strength, politically it seems, is his work. The summons to praise God is given no less than 13 times in this short psalm. All heavenly and earthly creatures, and all humanity too, are called to sing the praise of the Lord. As one of the five concluding hallelujah psalms in the Psalter, it is composed for congregational worship in the late post-exilic period. And it still echoes across the centuries in such modern hymns as This Is My Father's World. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all the rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, 
for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and the heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are to love him. Praise the Lord. Our second lesson for this, the, sec the first Sunday of Christmas, is part of Paul's letter to the Galatian congregations. And Paul tells them that when the time was right, God sent his son, fully human, to redeem sinful humanity and make us God's children. God has given his spirit to those who are his own through the Holy Spirit. And it is from that Holy Spirit's urging that we cry out to God as our dear Father. We're no longer slaves to sin. We are now children of the Almighty God. From Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, St. Paul writes, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. Because you are children, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Here ends our New Testament lesson. The Gospel is one of the few stories of Jesus after Christmas and before they begin recording his adult ministry. Mary and Joseph, being devout Jews, brought Jesus shortly after his birth to the temple. And that's where two ceremonies took place. The first was called the Redemption of the Newborn. Every male, man or beast, was regarded as belonging to the Lord. To fulfill this duty, an offering of five shekels was mandated. The other ceremony was for Mary's purification after having given birth. For 30 days after childbirth, women were considered ritually unclean. A lamb and a pigeon were called for as a sacrifice. But since that was beyond the means of many poor women, the law admitted that two pigeons would satisfy. The fact that Mary offered the lesser offering indicates the modest economic means of the Holy Family. And while discharging these duties, an old man named Simeon and an old woman named Anna who were looking and longing for the Lord's Messiah, spied Jesus and spoke of him as the fulfillment of Israel's spiritual longing. Simeon was now ready to die because he had seen the dawning of the fulfillment of God's promises. This is the Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Lord, 
Now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that this will be opposed, so that inner thoughts of many will be revealed. A sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel and the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of the Lord was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 